This is question uh, one of the 2016 scholarship physics exam. Right. Question one. A uh, pair of parallel conducting metal rails are connected to a voltage source. We've got a voltage source down here, um, as shown in the diagram. The fixed rails slope down an angle, uh, or thigh, was it thigh or theta? Um, that's not theta. To the horizontal below, uh, between the poles of a large magnet. Um, the force on the current current, current Carrying conductor and a magnetic field is given by the relationship F equals BV, uh, BIL. The voltage induced when a conductor moves to a magnetic field is given to B, V equals BVL. Both of these relationships apply in the case of the magnetic field and the conductor at right angles to each other um, and when the velocity is at right angles to both. So if you go into university physics, you learn that cross products are involved, but we'll just forget that we ever heard of that. Um, okay, cool. Question one, uh, show that the conducting roller can be placed across the rails and remain stationary in the position shown. If the magnetic field strength uh, is given by B equals mg tan theta over IL. Um, so this is where you sort of just draw your force diagrams. Do I have a ruler? No, I don't know what happened to my ruler. If I had a ruler, I'd do it neater, but I'm just going to wing it. So horizontally... Um, well, we've got current flying this way. We're just going to double check this is actually going to oppose it. Um, magnetic field is going from north to south, like so. So we have our current going across the wire this way. So we use our thumb for the current and our fingers for the magnetic field. And we can see, in fact, that if you can sort of see it, the force will come out of your hand so it does actually work. Always pays to check that the force is actually going to go up that way. So we're going to have our... Magnetic field will be going, what do we want to have? It's going to be, or if it was like just going horizontally, the magnetic field will be off to the right like that, or to the left, I should say, like that. Um, and that is going to be, I don't know, call it FB. Um, and you can break down, if so this is going to be the hypotenuse, you can break down FB to components. And this is going to be a right angle here, like this. So this is, what is that? That is indeed thigh. This angle here is thigh. Um, simply because it's this angle, it's just this triangle here flipped. So I've just literally got this triangle here and I've like gone like that to it. Um, so it's literally that same angle. Um, so that means this is f b cos thigh and this side is f b sine thigh thigh i think it's thigh um, because this is the opposite and this is the adjacent and we remember that um this is a hypotenuse and if you rearrange those formulas oh, i'll probably show you actually um i'll just do it for this one here here this is the adjacent so we have here we have one uh, cos Theta is equal to the opposite, uh, no, the adjacent, which is uh, this side here. Um, I don't even know what we'd call it. We'll just call it funny symbol, whatever, um, over FB. In other words, this side is equal to FB cos theta because you move the FB up. Um, and then we can do the same for the other sides. We have gravity points straight downwards, um, and we want to break gravitational force into its horizontal, well, into components, not necessarily horizontal. Um, and we note that this is, hold on, that's going to point down, that's going to point up like that. So this vector will point down, this vector will point up. We want to find our component of gravity that points the other way. So we're going to have a triangle like that. Note that this vector here points down and this vector here points down and this vector and this vector add to fg um, so again oosh, what do we have pretty sure this angle here oh wait just realized i did this triangle backwards because this here would be thigh which would mean this would be the component going down the slope but it's kind of pointing the wrong way so really i'm going to scribble this out just quickly do it over here. It should be like this. We have component over here, component coming down here, pointing down the slope. Um, this here will be thigh because 
this here would be thigh and I mean this is a bit extreme the this vector should be sort of tilted like that a bit more but it's just because it's neater for me well, it's just easier for me to do this is FG so this side is the opposite this side here so we're going to use sine um, so this is going to be uh, FG sine thigh um, and we realize that the component pointing down or not only down like that way is FG sine theta and the component pointing upwards is FB cos theta and we know those forces need to be equal so we have uh, FG cos cos why do I keep looking at the thigh equals FB sine um, thigh um, in other words MG cos pretty sure it's thigh equals uh, FB is BIL magnetic field times the current times the length uh, sine so I'm trying to rearrange for magnetic field, so we'll move, every, we'll move everything under actually. Um, so we're going to have magnetic field is equal to um, mg cos, hold up. Just realised this is fg sine, not fg cos, sine from up here and this should be cos Got that wrong around wrong the round the wrong way. Sine cos because we have this FB magnetic field. It's just because I've got this on the side and this on the side. Um, anyway, so we're gonna have just scribble this out. B is equal to MG sine um, thigh. And I knew that because sine over cos equals tan, and that's what I'm gonna to get to. So you can sort of keep things in your head for future reference over I L L uh, cos thy and just remember sine thy over cos thy equals tan um, thus magnetic field is equal to mg tan thy over B L oh no B L I L man I miss you today um, yeah, so it's just kind of looking at the forces using triangles to break it up. If I had a ruler, it'd be a lot neater. I don't know what I've done with my ruler, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just sort of winging this exam because it's an old exam, so they'll just work through it. Um, and it's currently locked down right now, so I haven't got much else to do other than, well, was it six at night now? Um, well, the voltage source is now replaced with a small value resistor of resistance R. So we're swapping out this. For a resistor, um, the middle moves down, middle roller moves down the rails and enters magnetic field. It slows down and continues at a constant velocity. Explain while it is inside the magnetic field. Ah, right, while it's in its, was it and continues at a constant velocity while it's in the magnetic field. Explain why this occurs. Well, when we have moving charges, so I don't know. Let's just can deal with conventional uh, conventional current for now, um, which is positive charges. So when we deal with them, we have positive charges and they are going to move that way through the magnetic field um, so we, the direction is your thumb the magnetic field is north to south so it's pointing up um, so you're going to get flow of charges oh, in the same direction so they're going to actually still flow in the same direction as it rolls through as those charges move you're going to get a force oh it's exactly the same as what we had before we're going to have a force that opposes so it's going to go in that direction um, and that force will increase as you get more and more like charges moving until you get to a point where literally the gravitational force um, will be equal to the magnetic force so the gravitational force pulling down the what do you call it the roller and the reason why you need the resistor there is it restricts the current otherwise it would kind of roll you get infinite current and it would stop and then roll with an infinite current and stop um i actually know what would happen actually because i don't actually know what really happens when you get infinite current um so yes it, i mean wires do have resistance um so i'll pause and try and write a coherent answer um and then sort of explain it all right so i've said as the roller moves through the i'll just put b field because i'm trying to shorten this um, the magnetic field charge separation occurs 
This volt, so charge separation is literally a voltage. This voltage induces a current. You've always, always got to do that. Uh, the, the voltage is induced first, then it's the current that is produced as a consequence of this. Um, induces a current which flows around the circuit but is limited by the resistor R. This flowing current experiences a magnetic force which opposes the roller motion. Um, I could probably like this right hand slap rule, that's how you figure out this, the direction. As the velocity increases, the magnetic force increases until it matches a component of Fg, or just gravitational force. I had to shorten it. I'm acting down the slope. Thus, F net equals zero because the force is all balanced. Um, ergo, constant velocity. This is a really, I could write a whole page on this probably explaining everything in detail, but I mean, trying to fit it in just like one paragraph, yeah, it's kind of tricky. Right, we've got next question. Um, show that the constant velocity achieved by the roller through the magnetic field is given by this formula here. So first we're gonna to have to write the formula from the previous page. B equals mg tan thi over I L. Um, and we're gonna to have to so use the velocity formula. So voltage is equal to from the over the page. It's BVL, I just memorized it. B little B L. Um Right, so this is a pretty straightforward question. You just got to go around in circles until you get this here. These two formulas can be rearranged such that it'll eventually equal this. Um, I mean, I did about a quarter of a page just fiddling around until I got to this, um, but there is a really short route to get there. Um, the short route is, so we have uh, mg, it's not mg, cross that out. It's uh, first step is v is equal to, it's the component of grav uh, the component of magnetic field acting up the slope. Is it up the slope? Yeah, up the slope. Um, so it's going to be. It was. It's F B cos thi. Um, so we're going to have V is equal to F B cos thi cos uh, F B cos thi. No, it's B cos thi, because it's a magnetic field acting up the slope. It's not the force. Um, we're just looking for that magnetic field component. Um, VL. Um, right, and what else have we got? We have... Oh, V equals IR, just Ohm's law. V equals IR. Um, right, so we're going to rearrange little v um, for all of this. We're going to have... Little v is equal to I, no wait, move this under, it would have been v, we're going to swap that out. So we're going to swap out the voltage for IR, and we're going to divide by, because we don't have voltage in here, but we've got an R, and we're probably going to have an I, we'll cancel out the I using probably this formula here. Um, what have we got, IR divided by B cos, the, uh, B cos, Thi L, um, and what do we need to do? We need to get rid of the I, so we'll rearrange this formula here for I. Um, in other words, um, we move this I up and move that B under. Um, so this is going to be equal to R over B L. I'm going to move this L across to here. Um, cos Thi times um, this I. I'm just going to move it out as if it was like front. And that I move it up, it's going to be uh, mg tan thi, you can sort of see I'm almost there, divided by uh, BL. BL, and that does actually equal uh, mgr tan thi over b squared l squared cos thi. That's it, that's, that's really it. Um, the trick is knowing that it's B cos thi and not just B um, because it is the magnetic field acting up the slope. Um, and it's not a force, it's just the magnetic field, but that magnetic field is, magnetic field, um, it's only like when it's perpendicular. When it's not perpendicular, you gotta take a, uh, like a component of that field. Right, I hope that sort of makes sense. Uh, probably doesn't, but. Hopefully it does. With the rails now horizontal, they are connected to an AC power supply as shown in the diagram. When the switch is closed, the motion of the roller may be any one of the variety of different motions. Explain how this is possible. 
Um, I'm gonna hunt down my ruler and draw up a graph. Right, so I found my ruler and I am gonna draw a graph of force over time. So here we go. Um, this is the time axis of the seconds and this is gonna be force I don't know, Newtons, whatever. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to assume it's, oh, I'm going to start at a max. We'll assume no damping. That'll do. Right. So, if we were to flick the switch and, like, so this is, this whole question is all about, not, not phase per se, um, but if the phase was at different points when you first open this or close the switch, the roller would do different things. So if you flick the switch and it started at max force, um, which would happen when it's max voltage, um, then, oh, I'll actually, I'll do that part last. If we started with, I'm going to section these up. I should have probably started with a sine graph. So let's just pretend that doesn't exist. If we started with zero force, then all of a sudden the roller would get, like the force would increase, increase, increase. The roller would accelerate up to a speed. Then it would hit max acceleration. So it hit some velocity and then it would slow down, slow down, slow down, and then hit zero. Then it would, the force would spin around. Oh, hold on, wait, no. The force would decrease, 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 and it would be hitting here. At this point, we'd be traveling at a constant velocity. So at this point here, we'd be moving at some velocity v. So it would speed up, speed up, speed up, speed up to some velocity v, because this is the force in the same direction. Then would slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down to zero. Then would speed up, speed up, speed up, speed up to that same velocity v, and then we'd do that continuously. So if we started at zero uh, force we would move to the left or the right depending on you know whatever way the like whether it started um you know the top of the anywhere that started moving up or moving down you move to the left or the right at a constant way well, like a semi like you'd move forward stop forward stop forward stop but it'd be like a constant bzzz, um speed however so that's the first example however if we started at max force the force would decrease, so it would accelerate it a little bit. So it would accelerate a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then here would hit a constant velocity V. Um, but then this, ooh, then it would be accelerated in the other direction, up to here. So it would have, yeah, okay, yeah, no, it would. So it would have actually, it would have moved forward a little bit from here to here, but then it's gonna move the other direction from here to here, so from here to here. So if you started at max force, it would just oscillate side to side. If you started at zero force, it would go in one direction or the other. Right, I'm gonna pause it and try and write a coherent answer. Um, yeah. Right, so I said the motion depends on the state starting phase of the current slash voltage. The voltage starts from zero, the roller will accelerate in one direction, cover a distance D, then stop. Then it accelerate in the same direction, then stop after another distance D. This would look like jittery motion. Um, if the voltage starts from max, it would oscillate back and forth but not travel any distance. I mean, I sort of explained how it all worked. Um, if you were to do this exam, you'd probably want to use the back page and fill out quite a bit more than this, just by covering the points that I covered here, um, but I'm just trying to get the gist of it. Um, cool.